Oh, baby. We got big things going with DeFi Kingdom's Metis. We now got this new Hercules Dex on Metis. All right. This, this mimics, we talked about this last time we're on with Christian Peter. He was talking about this other Dex, I think, was it on Optimism, KP? On Arbitrum. Oh, on Arbitrum. And what was it called? Camelot. Camelot. Their, their token is Grail. And if you don't know much about Grail, you should go back and do the research. The history is astounding. And I think that, you know, if you look at it, you know, history doesn't always repeat, but it does have a tendency to rhyme. And that Grail token uh, for the first couple of months did extremely well. And I remember it well because I did not buy it at the time. And yeah. I remember watching it go up and up and up and not stop for a while. And I got frustrated and didn't know why, but now I do. And now I've got a second chance. It's very rare that you get that second chance and Metis may be it. So uh, do your research. It's a interesting grail token and you can see what the uh, charts look like, but yeah. And so it just mooned this oh. token on. <laughs> it's, okay. It, it opened up at 200 guys. Grail and did very well. And then at the peak, I think right after the Arbitrum token came out, it got to 4,400. So it 20 x Okay. And that's because of this. Okay. So this now is going to be called Torch here. We're going to go over this, guys. This is Alpha Central here. Big things coming here. DeFi Kingdoms, as we know, is going to have their combat PVP combat system on the Metis blockchain, the Coliseum. And they made a deal here with this new Hercules Dex that's like the Camelot Dex that's on Arbitrum. And their token on the Camelot Dex went from $200 to $4,400. And that's because it has this yield booster. There's launch pad, dividends, different things you can do. Right now when you come, which in the description below is the link here, Hercules.exchange. Okay. And, and so when you come here and you look at the pools you're gonna see jewel on here baby the aprs don't look all that sexy right now that's because bob nothing will explain because he spent all day and so did kp researching this the real aprs go live tomorrow is that those right are just, what's going those on are here? just the swap fees that you see there so just like any lp you get some percentage of the swap fees based on your position that's all it's showing the admissions start at 11 a.m eastern tomorrow Okay, 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Central, 9, I mean, 9 a.m. Central. In 11 hours. Yeah, 10 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Mountain Time, Doug. That's for you. Okay, so I think this is bullish for Jewel uh, as well because now there's more access. I thought it was really bullish for, for Jewel also when they – uh, you can also buy it on Trader Joe on Avalanche now, you know, so that just gives more people more options to buy the jewel. And there's going to be apparently what we heard extensive rewards. Now, we don't know what the rewards are yet. Right. But but it's. It's bullish is what I keep hearing. What do you guys think? Well, so you just you just uh, hit on something that I forgot to talk about. I was just on okay. ADFK. So check out that for some more info. But so Jewel is on Avalanche at Trader Joe, but this is going to be a much different experience, right? Because Trader Joe obviously launched in 2021. Yeah. They have their Joe token that's out and blah, blah, blah. They yeah. are way, 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 way down on the roadmap. Whereas yeah. Hercules is in basically the second step the bootstrapping step of their initial liquidity. They had some alpha pools. That's basically all we've missed. So you want to talk about being early? There's going to be a five-day window here that, uh, is it five days? Yeah, the second to the seventh, where you can deposit in these Genesis pools for basically one-time only uh, shots at these rewards. And you can uh, get these Nitro rewards for two weeks, and the whole thing goes for four months. This is about as early as you can be unless you know somebody like as an outsider on a Dex, which is why it's going to be so different than Trader Joe, which will just, you know, there's no real incentives there for them to work together. Whereas Hercules at this stage really wants partners like DFK to have this mutually beneficial relationship. So it's going to be much, be much different based on that. Yeah. And it's just, it's more exposure for the project. It's more access to Jewel. That's how, that's how we all got in at first. We like those APRs, 
you know, and that a lot of us, that's how we kind of tippy toe in. Some people may not want to get in there and be a pro gamer, esport level game. By the way, boys and girls, it's out on De DeFi Kingdoms. You go to the DFK chain and Avalanche subnet, okay, on the Avalanche sub DFK chain, baby. It's like high level gameplay, all kinds of things going. But let's say a lot of people, they don't want to mess with all that, but they do like the game. They believe in the team because it's an awesome team. Guys like Christian Peter, who's now on the team, baby, right here in our presence, this pure, good looking hunk of man flesh. Let's go. Okay. And so it gives people an outlet, an option to ape into some jewel, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. I want to give okay. a big shout out to the ADFK guys as well. Yep. Um, go back and listen to that. I got to go back and listen to their two hours earlier. And everybody in the chat tonight, I'm seeing Skiller and Sticks Intern and Crypto yep. Baby H and, yep. um, you know, Doug Hype, the man, Baby. the Misty, the legend. Um, we had a great DFK meetup in San Diego, Sergeant and... Um, and sticks intern and uh we had a we had a special guest too who came out and and joined us and it was uh it was fun we got a chance to chat with doug hype on spaces and we had a great weekend we talked all about genesis pools guys oh. i just i spent the entire day today going through and trying to put together a primer on what exactly is this whole hercules decks and trust me i've spent two weeks in their discord trying to figure it out i was going to create an alpha pool primer last week but um it was a little bit too new it couldn't it couldn't be done i know grady you had a little bit of trouble on the yeah. alpha pools as well so i didn't yeah. want to go and, and confuse people now that the genesis pools are out guys yeah uh, just like just was saying earlier i mean this is the time when you can go out there tomorrow Take a look at what those APRs are. They're going to be paid out in Torch, X Torch, X Metis, and Jewel. So you're going to get four different tokens, and whatever that APR comes out to be, uh, it should be nice. I mean, I don't know. We'll have to all see it yeah. together. We'll all come back and we'll we'll chat about it because if it is really really nice, oh man, oh baby, oh, yeah. oh, oh baby. baby, it's going to be nice. Yeah, let's, I let's, know. Let's go so through it. What's that? 2021, 2021 vibes, my friend. Oh, I'm baby. feeling it. I'm oh, feeling baby. young again. Oh, baby. Young and full of hope. So Torch, X Torch, Medicine, X Metis, and Jewel rewards, uh, you know, which I'm yeah, getting just that? tiny little bits here. Okay. And so, which isn't much. So I've got it, you know, in the, oh, I'm not sharing the screen. I've got it here. And you know, to start it, you're going to want to come to earn. You can do it on the, on your phone. I did on my phone and it's in the Genesis pools. You'll see this jewel Metis option here. And right here you can, uh, th this is, it'll deposit it for you when you create the pool, but I've got, I've got two positions. I don't, I didn't know how long, how much it helped to lock either. All that was unclear, but once you do it, so, so maybe the meta from Bob, nothing because the nitro boost is for 15 days. Is that right? I think. And so something like that. And, if, uh, so some people have confirmed it. I think it depends a little bit on some other factors, but if you lock it, it's, it's basically a maximum of four months. If you lock it for the entire four months, Mm -hmm. You get approximately 60% more earnings. You get 1.6 uh, multiplier. So 160%, I believe more yeah. or less, which is, which is significant. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, months. that's a, that's a decision for everybody, but this is, this is not, I was a little bit worried at first that this was going to be the VE model again, and we'd be talking about years, but we are not, oh, okay. we are talking about months. This is yeah. a maximum of four months. The program is over. You won't be able to deposit after Sunday, I believe, the 7th. Uh, okay. But you can stay in. And if you're not locked, you can leave at any time. Uh, you may, you just won't get as many rewards. But uh, you, you're actually, there's a hard out basically in four months. Yeah. So, and you can do multiple pools. This one here that's lower that I did, $185. I did for like 31 days locked. This one is not locked at all. I might do one for 15 days. Maybe I'll do a little bit for four months. Who knows? Yeah. 
There you so, go. And and if you don't, if you guys are unsure about anything, don't lock tokens. I mean, that's the yeah. that's the best advice I can give you is you don't have to do anything. You can pull out of these Genesis pools at any time. The nice thing about that is the more people that don't go the entire four months, the people that do will get just that much more rewards. So the uh, the good thing is, is that if you do get into these pools and you stay until them to the end, they're probably going to be higher at the end than they are at the beginning. Yeah. Um, and we're all hoping that they're going to be nice and juicy and attract a lot of attention. That's what everybody wants. The Metis team wants that. The Hercules team wants yeah. that. The DFK team wants that. You know, we all want to see this uh, this be successful on a whole different level. I know that Just has done some calculations on it. I know that a lot of people have, and they're excited about it. So I'm really excited to see what the APRs are tomorrow. I'm going to create another video as soon as I know so that I can actually tell you guys what they're at because right now they're nowhere close to what they're going to be when all of these tokens are available. The nice thing too is that you're going to get this X torch. X torch is a derivative of torch. You can vest it over time if you want to, and you can get the liquid torch token, or you can stake it for different rewards. One of them is the launch pad that they have. The other one is the uh, fee sharing. So you get fee sharing from it as well. So there's lots of different ways to earn in this protocol. And that's why Camelot did so successfully on Arbitrum. We're hoping that Hercules does the same thing on Metis, but um, this is just the first step. You know, we've got PVP coming over there. People are going to want Jewel. They're going to want to play. They're going to want to do things with it. And yeah. yeah, it's just a deep liquidity pool that hopefully people can get in there and they can... Uh, you know, they can LP. You guys can all LP. I mean, why not make fees from people trading Jewel and Metis back and forth? Right. That's a nice thing, right? Right. And it's more exposure. It's more hype. This Metis blockchain is being developed out by dude's mom, Vitalik, Vitalik Buterin's mom. mom, right? Yeah. Okay, tell me. What do you think of the tech here? What do I think about the tech? Uh -huh. I, I got a quick, quick one-off. Hang on. Okay. So I often joke about Vitalik's mom, but I actually think it matters. <laughs> Like okay. of all the, all right, I'm a little off the rails here, but of That's all okay. the ETH L2s, half of which are completely useless, the other half are whatever, getting there. You really think the one with Vitalik's mom is going to be the one to fail? <laughs> what? It's, it's, in, it's inverse nepotism. Hey. That's a phrase that I did not know existed, but I just made it up and I think it plays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the tech, what do you think of the tech, guys? So the uh, the big yeah. announcements that they had at ETH Denver were the tech, the tech, and DFK. So mm -hmm. it was uh, nice to hear them be the first ones in line to get Eigen DA. So the Eigen Layer Data Availability Protocol, which is going to be out hopefully here in the next couple of weeks, um, and they're going to start testing it. They're going to start running through it. But if it works as well as we all hope it's going to work, it'll reduce fees a ton. Yeah. So gas will be not an issue. Um, yep. I think that you guys have seen it probably on base already and some of the other L2s where the the fees, the transaction fees, the gas, everything, the bridging fees went down, you know, substantially. Now that's supposed to be, it'll, it'll go up again over time because things all balance out. But with these, da these DA layers, they just create this modularity that allows the, um, you know, the you can scale away some of the, um, you know, some of the costs. So hopefully it goes to zero over time or it trends towards zero. That's the good thing about Eigen DA. The other thing with CCIP, which people don't talk about too much is chain links, you know, cross chain. Um, I forget exactly what it stands for, but it's basically send money, send money from any blockchain to any blockchain, to any financial institution, to any PayPal, to any, you know, to, to wherever you want to Zell. All of these things need to talk to each other and Chainlink CCIP is making that happen. So, you know, where we have to take our money now and we wire it into Coinbase or Binance or whatever it is that we do, you should be able to push a button on your phone and have it go directly into the Metis blockchain. That's the whole goal behind CCIP is just to allow you to take your, your value and, and, translate it from one place to another. If that's from the bank to a token or from a token to the bank or whatever it's going to be, you can do that now with CCIP. And that's supposed to be here summertime, um, probably end of Q2, Q3-ish. But that's another big deal. And the nice thing about this, you two guys, is that they did this a lot so that DFK could flourish. I mean, that was my understanding talking to their team is like, we're putting all of these things in place and DeFi Kingdoms is going to have a great time, you know, with cheap transactions and being able to transfer value 
anywhere. And I was like, wow, that's really cool to have a blockchain that actually said, we're doing this for you. Um, you know, you usually get the other way around. What are you going to do for us? But these guys have been really receptive and excited about marketing and excited about the entire, you know, getting, getting DFK on their chain. And I just, I mean, it was great to see dreamer up there on stage at ETH Denver for like three minutes talking all about DFK, you know, in front of like 20,000 people. So, you know, it's a, it's a huge deal. I, I I'm, I'm exactly with Jess on this one. I mean, you've got all these L2s and then you've got Vitalik's mom's blockchain. I think Vitalik's mom's blockchain has a good narrative. Right. And, and, and what you just said, Chris, real quick. Um, uh -huh. Hang on. Oh, I just spaced. I forgot what you just said. I was going to comment on. <laughs> what, what, we'll give you a. All right. Hang on. No, no you're good. Go ahead, if it Greg. comes back to you. If it comes back to you, that's good. It's no worries. But big shout out. Like we everybody's saying, blowing up in the chat affects our boy. Fex, the man, the myth, the freaking legend tonight on with our man right here. It's just crypto, a.k.a. used to be Bob Nothing on with Adventures in DeFi Kingdoms. They talked it came about back to me, baby. It came back to me. Uh, two okay, two podcasts in a row. I know my voice is going to go. My brain is going, but it came back to me. What you just said about uh, basically how they were trying to take care of DFK or whatever those examples. Uh, I believe DFK is the only non-native token. Uh, that is getting a Genesis pool. Is that correct, Christian? Do uh, you know? Because everything else is a Metis uh, protocol. There's like a, another Dex. There's a you know a liquid staking. There's all sorts of stuff that's that's Metis native. So DFK got basically taken care of in this what I view anyways as a really lucrative and kind of really good deal for everybody, including DFK. It, not even being a protocol on Metis. Like we were able to basically open a lane to bridge Jewel via Synapse and get the the token on there and then get into this this Genesis pool. I mean, that's like a sweetheart deal as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And so the, the rewards are going to be paid out and Torch and XTorch and Rat Metis and Metis and Jewel is our understanding. We don't know yet tomorrow how that's going to shake out, but... Where Where he has it on the I just wanted to correct on one thing. It's as okay. far as the Metis rewards go, I think it's only X Metis, which X Metis okay. is their vested Metis token. I don't think they're paying in in liquid Metis, um, which is fine. I mean, Metis is Metis. You can just vest it over time if you want to. But the you know the rewards that are going to be there, I mean, just those four tokens alone should be nice. I know Brown Gent just asked in the chat, you know, what's the APR is going to be? We'll find out tomorrow. That'll yeah. be the fun part, guys, when we can all just, you know, ape into X and and do screenshots of what the APRs are. You know, it was just kind of like how Crystal Vale yeah. was when it first opened or how Serendale 2 was when it first opened. And the nice thing is that I think just put it, you know, hit the nail on the head. I'll let you talk about what you said before we got on stream, but I, I love the way that you position this. Yeah. Oh, uh, what you mean? Uh, yeah, I mean, DFK uh, basically... Um, you know, we're outsourcing a Ponzi. I say Ponzi in the nicest way possible. I mean, as a compliment, like, this is something I kind of talked about. Like, we've seen the reality of, you know, when you need to pay somebody a jewel or a crystal from the gardens, it has to come from somewhere. It's not right. admitted. It's it's economics. It's real economics. It kind of sucks. But no, it doesn't suck. It's Ponzi-nomics. You know, that's why I'm saying 2021 vibes is that, uh, these tokens, the Metis, the X Metis that you're talking about, that's from a grant from the Metis Foundation. The yes. Torch and the X Torch that we're talking about is magic internet money. Obviously, your protocol, you have a token. This is how you bootstrap liquidity. You reward people through this. That's something that DFK can't do. But what they've managed to do, uh, I, I assume on purpose, is kind of <laughs> definitely on purpose, is like find a way to offer you know, products that people want, taking us back to 21 of, you know, where we can pool a jewel with a really solid all token, a layer one, you know, back in the day, it was Avalanche, Luna, whatever. Now it's Metis and L2, tomato, tomato, but we're pooling it. We're getting APRs. We're locking. We got prefixes on all these tokens. We got all these tabs to go through on this protocol, man. It's crazy. <laughs> it's DeFi. It's, uh, I'm, I'm super excited for it. It's taking me back and, um, yeah, I love it. <laughs> baby so oh, baby I, I imagine we're going to be doing some videos on this tomorrow see i'm wondering if how it's going to work out with the jewel rewards 
if that how much jewel is going to get paid out in these rewards and if that'll create buy pressure on jewel potentially so i i feel bullish on this whole thing and we'll be looking at this tomorrow to see how this shakes out who knows like is this thing going to be like five gazillion percent apr out the gate <laughs> like a lot of times these are, and then it goes down, you know, as it gets, the more people that get into this, obviously the more it'll dilute the APR, but word well, has it, it's an aggressive APR. Well, we're going to know on the seventh on Sunday when nobody can enter this pool ever again. Oh. So one of the things that Christian said a little earlier that uh, I wanted to touch on was the, the kind of the game theory aspect of this. That's how they described it. in One of the mediums I was reading, uh, kind of once everybody gets their position uh, and nobody else can enter this thing, people can leave and cash out and do whatever they want to. Say Torch went up a lot, you know, switch it into ETH and get out of there if they want to. But the people who stay and don't do that get more and more rewards based on that. So the APR will probably be super high tomorrow and then it'll slowly go down towards Sunday, but then it'll slowly creep back up as people are leaving nobody can come back in to kind of, uh, you okay. know, replace them. So, so once you the people leave, that you can't stay, come back too. Correct. Once you... After the seventh. Whoa. So that's an interesting aspect as well. Yeah. Whoa. You've got APRs that go up over time. Plus, yeah. plus one of the things that, you know, we don't talk about and we probably shouldn't speculate about is that, but they do in their medium article. So I'll go ahead and, and reiterate the fact that they said that, APRs will also go up if token values go up. So if the value of Torch goes up or the value of Jewel goes up or the value of Metis goes up, then guess what happens to the APR? Oh, uh, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, baby. Didn't think about that. That's 100% true. Yeah. So all this is all the rave. So this is, I think, maybe going to catch some of us by surprise at how big of a deal this is for DeFi Kingdoms. For this, for all of it, for the Metis blockchain and this Hercules exchange is very interesting. And so once you, is it all or nothing? Can you take out like 50% of your, of after Sunday and then put more back in if you still have a pool open or how's that no, work? There's no putting more back in. You can't put more back in. So no. the most we'll be able to put in is by Sunday. So we have till Sunday. To get into a this. very limited time. Like I said, this is the liquidity bootstrapping section. They want sticky liquidity. They're incentivizing locking for that reason. This is how you build the foundations of a DEX, right? Is that you need that sticky liquidity. That's what the bootstrapping is. So that's where the rewards are going to be the most. That's wild. Love that. Yeah, I think that uh, Sergeant Filthy McNasty is right, Grady. You're going to have to sell the kidney, sell the house, <laughs> sell the kids. I mean, this uh -huh. one, uh, this is, this could be a, a pretty decent shot. I look at it too. Like, um, you know, just was kind of alluding to this and, um, you know, when, when Serendale first came out, when DFK first launched, right. August of 2021, they had to bootstrap liquidity. So what did they do? They offered jewel incentives, which, you know, was the, uh, the inflationary token, which has to go up so that people will come in and buy it because the APRs are so high. And then when crystal came out, it was the same. And then when Jade came out, it was the same. Well, this time we don't have to do that. That's the nice thing is that Torch is doing that for us. So Jewel is fully emitted. Jewel's not going anywhere. Metis is already committed to it. Metis tokens are already out there. Torch is the one that's actually going to get inflationary. So the people that have the Metis and the people that have the Jewel don't have to worry about it. If you want to cash out early, like you were saying, Grady, I mean, you or or just, I mean, you can take your your torch and you can go turn it in and you can turn it into ETH, but then you're missing out on those rewards for the four months while you can get them. And we don't know how big these Genesis pools are actually going to be. They might be, you know, they, they could be really, really juicy and then they could get better and better as the token values go up. So yeah, yeah it's exciting. And so the reason why on Camelot, whatever token they had that's, that is called Torch here on Hercules, the reason why it went from 200 to $4,400 is because this is going to boost APRs and open up the door. It's got all this yield booster stuff, dividends, whatever this is. It's part of the earning and it's a launch pad. Yeah. So dividends, yeah, so the, way, the way dividends work is you stake your X torch and you get paid out in, I believe it's USDC and ETH. 
So it's pretty cool. You get DEX fees and your DEX fees are not paid to you in Torch. They're paid to you in USDC and ETH. At least that's my understanding. So you can take the X Torch that you're earning in these pools, stake it and get dividends directly and paid by fees from the DEX. Okay. And so there'll be that initial price run potentially. Yeah. So the token generation event is on, I believe it's the fifth or the sixth. So it'll be, it's, it's in a couple of days. And okay. also a thing we should touch on. Um, I saw in chat from Brown Gent, shout out Brown Gent was yeah, that I mean, uh, this also qualifies you for whitelist allocation of the torch token during that uh, generation event. The alpha pools did as well, but basically what that means I'm not actually 100% sure what that means, but what that means in a lot of projects is they'll do kind of a launch pad type of thing where you get different allocations for the whitelist and then you have a public sale. And it's always good to be as early as possible for those because the, the price tends to go up or like these token sales like Portal and stuff and Block like you've seen late recently, like the earlier you can get in, the better price you get. So any sort of whitelist allocation in a bull market it's kind of hard to lose money in my experience yeah. unless the project like sucks. Yeah. In a bull run, man, this is where some of the APRs go mind blowing bonkers. Whereas in a bear market, a lot of times these things just bust and go to crap and there's a lot of hype and then it, <clears throat> but in a bull run, it's a different story. It's like a different era. So. And it, of course, like you were saying with Grail a second ago, another reason these tokens go up, and it, I'm sure it'll be the same way with Torch, is that there's going to be, after the token generation event, there's going to be a ton of Torch pools, and they're going to incentivize the hell out of those. Obviously. Okay, so there's going to be oh, yeah. all this demand for Torch, very low supply that's inflationary, and so that's hard to play sometimes. Like, what should you do? Take advantage of it or not, or when to sell? We'll be doing videos on this. I think I will be. Yeah, profit taking strategies, which I'll also be doing, by the way, baby, with Kulo and Big Red, like our boy Skiller is talking about here, which are very low hanging, easy plays in my book, easy play monster upside tokens. We'll be doing profit taking strategies as these things hit all time highs. What should we do when to take profit, how to handle that, things like that. And I love to get different takes and ideas. For you guys, what is your game plan with Torch? Are you going to be stacking that Torch and doing the yield booster and doing the dividends and all that? Are you going to be selling it? What are you going to be doing there? As far as I'm concerned, you know, the um, we'll see what the APRs look like and, you yeah. know, what, what they're actually going to be. I'm going to allocate, you know, some of my jewel, some of my Metis, and I'm going to definitely hop in there for four months. And I'm going to take advantage of every single yeah. benefit that I possibly can here, because, you know, just like Jess was alluding to in a bull market, it really doesn't matter. I mean, there's a lot of things that that launch that are never going to make it through a bear market, but in a bull market, you you guys all know from last time, I mean, you don't have to have much of anything in order to get traction, but this is one of those projects that everybody wants to see be successful. If it has, you know, just a, a portion of the success that Camelot had, um, I think it'll be, it'll be great for everybody. And that's what I'm looking forward to is that, you know, the Metis teams look, wants it to do well. The, the DFK team wants it to do well. Obviously, the entire Metis ecosystem wants to see it do well. And if it becomes the number one DEX that people go to, and I think Camelot has like $170 million worth of liquidity on it. Right now, Hercules has nine. So if it 20X is fantastic, you know, we'll see something similar. Yeah. Wow. How do you guys think this will affect the liquidity? So, okay, before I ask that question, one strategy I'll be doing mm -hmm. is I've already got a pool here. We can show you when I come earn positions. One of these pools has no lock. One of them has a 30 day lock. I'll, the one that's 30 day lock is the smaller one. I'll probably do one something like that for a 15 day lock. And then I'll do something for a four month lock. And you can sell if it moons right out the gate. I'll be able to take out some of this for profit. Uh, and then as time goes on, I'll be able to do that. That'll be kind of my plan. And then we'll be. I'll be brainstorming with you guys on how to handle this X. <laughs> you know, how long is this Ponzi going to last? Bob, nothing. <laughs> yeah, these, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't have any like plan in terms of the torch. All I know is I want to farm as much as I can. 
Right. I want to, I want to buy at a discount as much as I can on the white list. Uh, I'm very interested in that in terms of like, what do you mean? White list? Market, what do you mean? White list? You get uh, like allocation right based on what you uh, contribute in. to the Genesis pools oh, and okay. the alpha pools Got uh, it. for basically the amount you can buy as early as possible when they do the t token generation event. Got it. They're okay. not just going to, they're not, they're not just going to drop in uh, a V2 like uni pool, like, like when jewel launched and then people are just like madly like trying to swap. It's not going to be like that. It's going to be like a, a tiered kind of release and the whitelist is going to go before the public. So as much as you can get there, I, I, I I'm not a hundred ten. I'm not a hundred percent sure on this, how this works, but it, I don't know what else it, it would mean. Right on. Okay, so I interrupted you. You were you were still going. What were you saying? Bob, not I don't being, remember. I mean, just it's just crypto. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'll ever get past that. What what do you think, KP? That's a hard one to rebrand for me. Yeah. Freaking legend. Oh, the the torch, torch. Yeah, what I was yeah. saying, I want to farm as much as possible. I don't know how much I'll be buying. You know, after the fact, in terms of just to speculate, maybe some. I don't know. But I just want to farm as much as possible because you know that's that's free money. Yeah. It's, so like I want I wanted to own Jewel anyways. I wanted right? to own Metis anyways. Sure. That's why I say it's free money to me. Yeah. Like if those two things are true, you know, there's always you know some smart contract risk. There's impermanent loss risk with this. Mm -hmm. That's really you know. But I'm I don't worry about that stuff as much. I converted a bunch of ETH into this LP. So yeah. I, I view this as kind of separate from my lo my lock jewel bag, my spot jewel bag, because that yeah. stuff I don't really want to expose to impermanent loss. This is kind of just like a side project uh, to me, at least. I mean, everybody can decide what they want. If you want to, you can bridge your entire jewel stack over to Metis and, and swap half of it and then get get full full on ape into this. Uh, personally, I'm you know playing a little differently, but that's for everybody to decide for themselves. Right on. Yeah, I think this is going to be a, a real easy play to at least trickle a little bit of money in here. Yeah, it's funny. But Mega just uh, made a comment in the chat about, you know, th they've used the same contracts as Camelot. They've used actually the same. They call them SP NFTs, the, 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 um, or LP NFTs, the same liquidity NFTs that Camelot uses. So the V3 contract for all these DEXs, is, it takes the liquidity pair and turns it into an NFT. And that's what Grady's got up there on, on his uh, screen right now is that he's got one that's locked for 30 days and one that's not locked at all. Those are both two different NFTs. So mm -hmm. they're both two different contracts. You can do different things with each one of them, but each one of them has value to it. So depending on what you do and how you do it, you can make different pools. You can make different NFTs. You can stake things differently. You can, you can approach this like any other type of, you know, decks that's out there. Um, right. I think most of us have just forgot the times when token values went up. I mean, when I first got into Polygon Matic and I started farming it, it went from like 30 cents to like 60 cents to like a dollar. And I was like, wow, not only am I getting, you know, a hundred percent yield, but I'm also too getting a three X in the value of these, of these farm tokens. Yep. Um, and I'm just like, you know, that's kind of the way it was on Camelot with the grail right. token. You know, when it came out, people were like, oh, this is a farm token. They sold their grail for, for ETH. I think I did the same thing. And then all of a sudden grail just shot up in value. So you know, people sold their jewel for one when it first came out because it was a farm token. You know, that's that's the way that usually farms work. And everybody right. has to go in with their own idea on what it is that they want to accomplish. But, you know, when it, when we're this new into it and the APR should be big, it's like, yeah, look at it like, OK, take some of it off the table. But, you know, keep some right. of it, do what you want to and make the best, you know, make the best uh, decision for you personally. You know, there's, there's going to be, I think we should all do lots of content. I know that the AODFK guys went on tonight. I know that I'm sure that mega and the jewelers and DAGs will be on talking about, it. I'm sure sticks internal probably talk about it on office hours and hopefully the box side guys as well. The, you know, the, uh, the mythic squad between burning, you know, different heroes in the pit, they should be talking about it, but yeah, everybody should be, you know, come up, come up with some good ideas on what we can all do as a, as a community here to, 
to right. basically inform people on what's going on, how they can get involved. Crypto Baby H has already asked me for a one pager, which, okay, yeah. great. You know, how do you get Jewel in or how do you get the uh, liquidity pair? How do you take advantage of these Genesis pools? Because, you know, just like Just was saying, we got until Sunday, guys. I mean, we've got five days to make this happen. And yep. hopefully it's going to be big for everybody that has anything to do with DFK. Yeah, Crypto Baby H has been blowing me up on this. It's huge. So, guys, I think, and you want to make sure when you, you go to earn, you click on pools. It'll pop up in V3. Don't go to V3. It's not going to do much of anything for you. You click vaults V3, and that's where you'll go to the Jewel Metis pool. I think there's a chance where you, we, you'll you be able to earn enough interest, potentially, even in this very first week or two, to get your initial investment out and sell the profits. Harvest and sell if you want you know, and then play this game with this torch because there's going to be heavy and I'm just totally speculating here, reckless specula speculation, but there's heavy buy pressure for the torch. It's going to be coming. That's why again, with the Camelot token, this identical to the torch on the Arbitrum blockchain, it went from $200 to $4,400, you know, real fast. We'll probably see something like that. And so because there's going to be high demand, but then it's going to become probably more inflationary over time, right? And so the debate is, when do you sell it? How long do you keep it? How long do you lock it? There's going to be all these different things and ways to play this. If you want to play it in one way, if you want to be super safe, like uh, Bruce is talking about, he doesn't want to touch this, which is fine. Uh, looks like our man's become a Bitcoin maxi. That's what a bear market will do to you. <laughs> Wrecking you all like none other. Okay. Um, oh, what is this? Oh, this Hercules medium article. Okay. So. Yeah. Yeah. They, I they lay out the timeline on there. If anybody wants to check out the medium, it's pretty good. Okay. Okay. Here, I'll go ahead and share that in the chat, baby. But I think at least even on the short term, if you just want to get in and get out, it's an easy play. Easy peasy play is my thoughts and on how this will be. Again, we'll be doing more streams here coming up on it. I'm bullish on this. Uh, I don't know if I'm bullish on it for like a year from now, but over these next weeks and months, I'm pretty bullish on all this. Yeah, Maybe. we have we have two weeks until the Bitcoin halving. So, you know, yeah. the, this is the time when usually everybody gets excited. I usually think that before the halving, just like we're starting to see right now, we usually have a dump that happens. It's just been the same for the last couple of cycles. And then after the halving, Late things by. kind of just chop around for a while. Uh -huh. And then towards the end of the year is when things tend to go absolutely ape, you know. Yeah. And, and then what's that's even different now is that every single day, there's buy pressure from the ETFs. Right. And right. So that's what makes us different. Yes, Brown Gent locking it. I think um, just crypto, you said that locking it for four months gives you 160% extra APR. Is that right? That's or what two or three that's what two or three people independently uh reported that that's what it said. Okay. Um I, I don't think that's a hundred percent yet. Okay. Um We'll see. I was ex I was hoping for a follow up uh, uh, post from them or announcement, but they've been a little bit they've been a little busy today. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's why I wanted to hop on with uh, ADFK and now here since I was invited is that uh, it's still it's still a little confusing. I think uh, if you haven't like been able to research this all day. Yeah, yeah, I think it's really confusing. I've been in their Discord for a while now for at least the last two weeks, and um, you know they they have a tendency to say things that are very, um, they're not in black and white. So it's very difficult to get any type of, uh, you know, a, a, a strong opinion one way or the other. And I don't want to give anybody any wrong advice. So before you even do anything, guys, make sure that you check the APRs tomorrow. Make sure that you check if there's a benefit to you to locking it. It should be written down somewhere. You know, I don't want you guys to lock your tokens and then for some reason you need them and you can't get them. So, you know, always make sure that you you're doing what's in your best interest. So mm -hmm. don't 
don't take anybody else's or, or take, you know, do what Grady did lock a few of them and, and keep a few of them liquid. But yeah, um, you know, don't feel like you need to do anything. You don't need to, it's just, this is an opportunity. It should be good. We all, we all think that it's got a, a ton of potential. Um, but until we get into it here, until we see what happens on Sunday, we, none of us will know. We just have to keep each other informed. Yeah. And also so tomorrow you, we'll find out what's that, Bob, go ahead. So what you could do, uh, yeah. if you wanted to like going into tomorrow, you could do mint an NFT, uh, get in there and not lock for zero right. days and kind of just see what happens for a couple of days. You still have, like I said, those five days to decide basically whether you want to lock or not. If you choose, if you start not locking, you can always switch to locking, but it mm -hmm. doesn't go the other way around. So you could do that and then decide before Sunday. Yeah. And I'll, I'll be doing like a few hundred bucks. I'm not putting my life savings into this, but like a few hundred bucks. See, as you can see, this $185 worth of jewel and rat medicine is, is locked for 31 days. This one is not locked at all. That'll probably be my biggest little pool too. So then yeah, I'll do one you, for 15 days to, and I'll do one for four months. So you, know? you could withdraw that one, that 329 bucks right, right now in two days if you decide wait a second what am i doing i want to lock for more rewards you you have that option right right no it does not have to be locked yeah we're we're still not a hundred percent sure on the whitelist stuff uh i was hoping oh, okay. for a little clarification on that but it's it seems to me based on what i've read that it's going to be based on the amount you deposit and you're going to get a big bonus if you lock for duration uh, yeah. in terms of the whitelist allocation. I think yeah. Brown, uh, gent is, is, uh, interested in the allocation. Like I was talking about before in a bull market, like that's where you want to be. It's, it's pretty hard to lose. Yeah. It's a, the way I've heard it is that the alpha pools, $500 and the alpha pools was a whitelist spot. And that was for $1,500 of the allocation for the token generation event. So you can buy up to $1,500 per whitelist spot that you had. As far as the Genesis pools go, they're a little bit different. Just like Just was saying, there's, um, they said that there's an amount and a time frame involved with it to get certain allocations. And the more that you put in, the longer that you lock it up for, the bigger an allocation you get, which makes sense. I think that's a, you know, fairly simplistic way to look at it. So um, I I believe, and and don't hold me this, but I believe they said their token was going to be $167. So if you're not going to go out there and buy some of their tokens, there's no reason why you need a whitelist spot. But if you do want to go get some tokens out there, you know, at the $167 price point or whatever it is that they end up listing at, um, then, you know, make sure that you read the docs and that you ask the admins what it is that you need to do in order to get that whitelist. You mean that with tokens, you mean the torch tokens? Torch tokens, I think are going to open at 160. At least oh. that's what I've heard is. And aren't we also earning those though too? Yeah, we're earning okay. them. So okay. they're going to be part of the the rewards. So they will be they will show up there in the APR. So you know, depending on what they open at, what they go to, um, that was the thing that really threw me off, guys. With Grail was I think it opened up at two hundred dollars, if I if I'm not mistaken. And you know, at two hundred dollars, I was just like, this is ridiculous. I don't want to buy a token for two hundred dollars. And then you know, to watch it go up to There's four thousand many of hundred, yeah, it was just it was painful. Yeah, when you had to buy it, it's, that's what like when it runs away from you like that is wild and it happens in crypto like and it happens fast it's yeah. so wild how fast these things can run right so and there's, and there's no guarantee at all that this is going to go up it might go down right. it might go sideways you know there might be anything that happens to it but um it's a nice token to know that you're going to get you know metis is right around 100 bucks um if this torch tokens at 167 or wherever it opens up that's great and then we've got jewel <laughs> yeah so and so i it's just it's bullish i think for dfk man and jewel so let's go anything else guys what else should we hit on i i keep hearing good things about the metis blockchain technology uh crypto baby h was raving about it tonight to me of just how excited and giddy she is with this whole thing the partnership how all this is going down super bullish that's what dreamer had told me too how bullish he was on this partnership he's like this is the best thing ever for dfk i remember he told me out there so it i, I think we got it. 
bright skies in in our horizon. Go. Sorry. I mean, I believe it. I couldn't be more stoked. Um, basically, this was just out of nowhere from my perspective. Obviously, I was just sitting around and saw this announcement for Bolon on Saturday night. This was out of nowhere. I yeah. completely stalked basically everything Bolin said in, in Discord for the last two days. And uh, he also said, um, well, so so DFK, um, you know, is providing liquidity for this startup, right? Mm-hmm. So they're they're providing a bunch of jewel tokens that were previously allocated for other reasons, but they've decided, you know, for the betterment of the community, for the betterment of the tokenomics for jewel, they're gonna reallocate to this this uh source as well as well as the metis tokens which they've uh all he would say was they have some sort of subsidy in terms of it's not all their money because we're talking about half a million dollars here this is a huge investment this is a big move they're making moves if if you've been sitting around you know poking with a stick like when are you going to do something dfk like they are doing something they're putting them on the table and saying this is this is the move uh so you know that makes me even more you know uh, you know, confident that they've done uh, all their research and I, I can understand what they mean by, um, you know, just the Metis partnership kind of, this seems like a relationship that has just been a long time coming and that they're getting the sweetheart deals because of it, from my yeah, perspective. Which I love to see. Yes. Crypto Baby H says innovation that will change the game and the blockchain processes. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, the nice thing is, is that the, uh, you know, it's not just revenue that's going to go to people that are LP and it's a lot of actual revenue that's going to be going from that LP position. Um, just like just was saying to the actual team itself. And, you know, Metis wants to see this happen. Obviously the guys at Hercules want to see the, the total value locked go up. They have, you know, a big incentive to see these tokens rise in value. And, you know, they want to see people have successful launches on their launch pad. They want to see, you know, the entire the entire community benefit from it. So, yeah, it's a it's a win win. I mean, this this Metis deal came out of nowhere. I mean, it was like something that Sunbear worked on just like it, it seems like yesterday, but it's probably been two months now. Yeah. Um, but they were to me, it was a it was a non-starter because it's a it's an ethel too. I mean, you guys know how expensive they are. I mean, I bridged money over. I, I did the LP. I think my LP was two dollars. It was like two dollars and sixteen cents. So I was like, you can't go questing on Metis right now. It's not going to work. But um, over time, it's going to change and it'll be different and it'll be. It, it'll also to add value. I mean, that's one of the things I think people always forget when it comes to ETH is it sucks. It sucks to go out to ETH and have to spend $60 on a, you know, on a transaction, but Man. that's where all the value is. That's where the hundred billion dollars worth of value is locked. So yeah. when you're on an ETH L2, you have access to all that layer one liquidity. Anybody can bridge ETH back and forth to Metis. Anybody can bridge USDC back and forth to Metis. All that money that's there can go right. back and forth. It's not like Avalanche subnet where you have to bridge things from Avalanche and go into it and do all the other things that have to go. I love Crystal Veil. Vale. I love the DFK chain, but you're, you're, you're kind of tied to how much liquidity you have. Now having ETH there, right there for us, it's like, <clears throat> wow. Okay, we've got access to this. And and if PVP is successful and if the, the Coliseum is a huge hit, you know, th- those prices won't seem that big of a deal anymore. It'll be like, you know, it, it's going to be a, just a small drop in the bucket for, you know, these people that really want to come out. They really want to play. They see the game. They love it. You know, one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about real quick is Bolan was in the Metagoons Discord on Friday. I know some of you out there saw it. And um, it was insane for me to hear from the from their actual community god we didn't know that dfk had had battles we didn't know that they had combat oh my god how do i go buy heroes why don't you guys do more content how can we never see anything like that i was like i thought that we did a damn lot of content right i was thinking like we do a ton of hunts we do you know we do that on stream all the time and here's these guys in an entire discord forty three thousand people saying like we never seen a dfk hunt before so i was like man we need to really get out there and start doing more uh more hunts more marketing more streaming more right. you know more everything guys yeah metagoons uh bolon was on on that metagoons and and there's another spaces actually maybe i'm getting getting them confused Bolon's been out there rocking it for DeFi. And every time it's like minds are blown. Whoa, I didn't know DeFi Kingdoms had all this going. Oh, man. 
Yeah, Bruce, baby. You know, you can just tippy toe in, baby. No worries. Just try it out a little bit. Tippy toe in there. <laughs> I think I, I'll be very surprised if this isn't a home run for whoever jumps in this. Yeah. No, yeah. I'll just say and, that. And, and Tad, I think that we're going to do a lot more community driven content. I wanted to give a shout out to the Donate 3 platform because yeah. that's a great way for people to support small content creators, people that don't have 500 subs that, you know, are out there creating content and, you know, in the world. And, and it's great to just be able to send them some, some jewel or some crystal or some bloaters or some, I mean, the jewelers got a donation guys on Saturday of 6.88 million gold in their stream. I was like, holy <laughs> shit, who, who sent them that amount of gold? But it was like, and the, yeah. the sender, the sender they had on there was Jesus. So it was, it was holy. It was from a, you know, from a, from a higher, a higher power, but yeah, it's, it's fun to go out there and donate things to people, especially DFK content and dfk you know assets that we can give to to other people but i love watching people hunt i mean it's fun for me to go out there and watch you guys all play against the boars and play against the yeah. damn mother clucker you know she's a she always kicks my ass but it's fun to watch that and i think that we need to get more of that content out there so yeah the the more content that we can create as a community and, and share it amongst each other the better yeah i still right in the description below too is that donate link I need, still need to figure it out because Kong has my login. I think Kong <laughs> created me a login and I haven't connected with him on it yet, but I want to, I see him tweeting. They're doing big things, donate. And this will be huge. I yeah. mean, all over the place, even for big, huge YouTubers to adopt potentially. Oh yeah. Because I mean, people can just donate crypto instead of doing super chats or whatever. And yeah. that pops right up on the screen. Right. Even. And it's great because you know they they do um, they do integrations with whatever gaming project you've got, so they can do shrapnel tokens. You know they can do you know chicken tokens. They can do whatever tokens there are on any different blockchain that's out there. So it's really cool to be able to have a gaming project where you can donate to your favorite content creator and whatever the token is of that specific game. So if it's pixel token or yep. actually token or whatever, it's like, great, I can go out there and donate to this little content creator, this little guy that's out there doing his thing. He's get going through these hunts. He's doing, I mean, there's so many people in our community that I don't get a chance to see that are just those small guys that are out there in Europe or, or Southeast Asia that are just going out there and doing different things. I love to be able to send them, you know, here's a couple of tether. Here's a couple of USDC, whatever, you know, it's fun to be able to send stuff to people, make their day, make their, you know, make their month and uh, you know, just give some, give, give some crypto to somebody, you know? Yeah. yeah. I want to address skiller here. So this is why I'm so bullish on this is that this will give people another reason to buy jewel. And, and then, and it'll also, if Jewel pumps as a result of this, it'll just bring more attention to DeFi kingdoms. So that's my hope. I'm hoping for this, that this is another catalyst where we see a big pump in Jewel overall, because it'll bring average Joe Blows that are maybe have heard a million times about DeFi kingdoms and Jewel, but for whatever reason they didn't get in. Now, if they get in these juicy APRs, they're like, hey, yeah, I'll, I'll ape into this a little bit. That's what I think. That's what I think is going to happen, baby. Let's go. Baby. Yeah. Jewel price would be great if it, you know, if it continued to, uh, to go up. I mean, it's just, you see, you see that, you know, what Metis went from $10 to a hundred dollars, you know, you've got tokens like that, that have just gone up tremendously. And, you know, Jewel's kind of just kind of plotted along. We haven't had that. We had that one little pump up to 80 cents and then it came back down and, now it's like, all right, when do we get ours? When do we get our time? You know, when's when's that when's that actual time in the sun? And I'm just I, I'm I'm hoping that it's with Metis, guys. I'm really hoping that we see that we see that trust in the ecosystem. I mean, look at how many people have loved, you know, have have put some love in DFK in the past, and and we've always had that warm fuzzy feeling. These guys are behind us. They want us to see, they want to see us do well. They want to see our our value go up because then their blockchain value goes up so yeah it's yeah. A, enlightened incentives it's really cool yeah win wins all over the place just it's just crypto is aka bob nothing boys and girls the man <laughs> is rebranded let's go that's true <laughs> baby okay anything else should we end it 
anything else you guys want to talk on? I'm bullish on this. We'll be updating. I think I we mean, need to yeah, update everything. If you day. wanted to go through the logistics of it, like I said, I, I'm still not sure people understand it, but or okay. we can or we can just call it. Yeah, logistics. You click earn and go to pools. Make sure you don't click on V3. This is the big trick. I mean, it's not a big deal if you do. You're just not going to get any rewards in V3. You got to go to vaults V3. Okay. And that's where this will just put you straight into the steer pool. Yep. So if you click the wrong one, it's going to ask you like for a price range. Right. Whereas how V3 uh, pools work with uh, Uniswap, but the steer is going to do that for you. So that's the one you want. You don't yep. want to mess with price. It's going to keep you in, in range. And then it'll, you'll want to do also where it goes into the, uh, wait, did I just do it wrong? I think so. Yeah. Earn pools, vaults V3. Vaults. I thought that's just where I was. Okay. And then new position. New position. Yep. Yeah. New position. And you want to make sure it goes into the nitro. Oh, why is this even an option? Full? Oh, you got to click auto then. Yeah. So manual, here's another thing. You don't want to do manual. You click yeah, auto. auto. And that that's when you know you're in the right spot. You see the steer. Okay. That's all you can do. And it repositions it for you. And, you know, this is where you do it. And it'll give you an option for a time limit. And to make sure you go into nitro. Pretty easy you just don't want to make sure you don't do manual <laughs> because yeah, it's I think giving me a range here mine was already toggled to auto for some reason when i looked mm. at it so okay okay i thought but yeah mine was you, on my you, phone yeah yeah mine was but, too. on my phone it's a little yours is a little different because you already have positions but mm -hmm. hmm. so earn but anyways yeah it's good but uh once you get into the next one so you have to do 50 50 i believe I don't think you can do single sided, can you, Christian? I don't think no, so. No, it'll automatically it do it for if you. If you do the auto or not, but yeah, yeah. if you guys, it, there's you don't, there's no reason you won't make a mistake. If you go into pools and you pool it, you can always take it out. There's nothing that you need. I mean, you don't need to. You don't need to be. Um, but go into auto on V3 pools, uh -huh. and then you can put it whatever you want into your jewel and your right. meta. It'll, it'll make up. So See, you, it pops it up for you. So it's it'll, a 50 -50. it'll pop it up for you. It's not. It's it's kind of 50 50. I want to say it's probably more like 50 yeah, it's like 52 or 45. 48 or something. Okay. Yeah. But then if you click the next button, Grady, you'll see where you have a toggle to get in the nitro pool. You want to get in that pool. That's the the highest rewards. If you go all the way to the bottom and create. Oh yeah, create position. Okay. So if you don't click that, you won't get in the nitro for the most yeah. rewards. On so you want that, and you got to click it. So when yep. you click on, you actually got to because that's your only option. You mm -hmm. click, and right now okay. it's not showing anything. That's because it doesn't start till tomorrow. Till tomorrow, and then you decide if you want any sort of lock duration, and right. then you're done. And don't do any more than four months. I don't think it'll let you, but yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't done mine yet. I haven't even done mine. I'm gonna do it tomorrow morning. <laughs> okay. okay. And if you and if you don't do the, I want all the, I want all the information first. That's how yeah. I am. If you don't See do the nitro auto stake, it. if you don't do the auto stake, you can still go up there, Grady. If you go up to earn, um, and you go into the into the pools, into the Genesis pools. Uh huh. Genesis pools. Yeah. Yeah. So if you do that, and then if you go and click on the the jewel metis. Mm hmm. So it'll say deposit. Yep. And so if you create that LP and you don't click on that auto nitro pool, oh. you can still deposit it right there. Okay. So if that you don't have sense. it deposited and you'll see down there in the stake position right under that, once you deposit it, your stake position will show up. So yeah. once you do that, you'll be able to see it. It'll have all the details right there for you. So you'll know that it's in the Genesis pool and you know that you're, you're set and ready to go. Yeah. So it's, it's not as hard as it looks. You just got to follow those specific instructions. This dashboard doesn't even apply yet, right? Because we can't even get the X torch. So none of this applies yet on dashboard right? or dividends. There's, there's no torch yet. The token right. generation event, I think just was right. It's like either the fifth or the sixth. Yeah. And so they're going to have like 24 hour time frame when you can buy in. And then once they have their tokens out, that's when we'll start earning it. And once we start earning it, we'll see, we'll get to see exactly what those APRs are. Yeah, baby. So tomorrow 
I bet I'll go live and we'll be talking about it. My hunch, just from be word fun. on the street, boys and girls, be fun. Word on the street. The hunch I've got is this is mega, super, crazy, uber, bullish for DeFi Kingdoms and for Jewel. I agree. We'll follow up on this baby tomorrow. It's definitely bullish. We'll we'll know a lot more at the AMA on Thursday. Also, too, I believe that after the AMA on Thursday, there's going to be a Twitter Spaces with the Hercules team. Ooh, wow. So if you guys have any Ooh. questions at all, make sure that you listen in on the AMA. And if you can't make it, listen into that Twitter Spaces with the Hercules team. Let's go. Looking hey. forward to that. <laughs> and the Hercules team is very nice in Discord. I will say I scrolled through hours and hours of absolute bedlam today at launch, even though they give you a 24-hour buffer to avoid that. People yep. are just going to be people. Everybody was freaking out, running around with their heads cut off, but they were very nice and very yep. patient, and you can go in that Discord for some help. Yep. Even though and all the information isn't as yes, clear nitrous, as possible. Yes. Well, what, what was that last thing, Bob? Nothing. Even Sorry. though all the information is not crystal clear, even to me, they're very helpful and they try. Okay. Yeah, they definitely do try and, and we can help each other guys. So if you've got any questions at all, feel free to go into our discord. And um, I know that Bolon's had good conversations with the Hercules team. And, you know, we've all tried to make sure that we know what the actual, what the numbers are supposed to be. Um, I think that we all think is, this is going to be a huge bullish event for everything and we're we're hoping that it comes out really well obviously you know being a third party to this we only have so much that we can do as a dfk team so we're hoping that the hercules team also too executes on what it is that you know they need to do on their side yeah. um, since it is a fork of camelot you know we, we're we're pretty confident that you know there's not going to be any any problems because they've had you know they've had everything audited they they know what's going on um, but with that being said, too, there's always risk to anything. So, you know, make sure that you know what you're doing. Make sure that you do your research. Go out there and take a look at Camelot. See what they did. You know, research it. They are, they're, they've been on Arbitrum now for like almost two years. So you've got a, a pretty good indication of what they did, how they launched, what went on, what some of the Genesis pools were over there. I think they called them something else, but um, similar. And you'll be able to oh, see, you know, everything. Do the, do the Zeely campaign. They're giving away rewards based on experience for Zeely. Oh, yeah. Do that Nitro drop. Yeah, you guys definitely want to make sure you do the Nitro. I didn't think – I thought it was closed. What is it? No, it's still got some time. Oh, great. What okay, is it? everybody, make sure that you go out there to Zeely and do the Nitro drop campaign because um, Hercules is going to probably do a torch drop for at least some of this experience that you get. So you can do like the six or seven tasks that are out there and, and uh, yeah, earn yourself some experience for their for their torch drop. Okay. That's cool. So you do this within MetaMask. You connect your MetaMask wallet to this. Is that right? And then you do these different things. Yeah, like you, you, it's a Zealy account. So you, you do a Web3 connection with your wallet and you connect your Twitter and your Discord and you join the community and get as much XP as you can based on doing these. I see. Uh, some of them are annoying for yeah. like retweeting stuff, but you right. know, it is what it is. Many of them are annoying. Many of them you can work around too. So if you want to do the task, you don't have to necessarily retweet. When the retweet button pops up, you can still confirm it. At least I could. So you don't have to worry about spamming your your followers with you know content that you don't really want to do. So just you know, you guys know how to work around these things. They're you know the, you have to join their Discord. You'll get a role. Um, you have to do a couple little tasks here and there, but the the X stuff, the Twitter stuff, I think you can work around it when they make you like and repost and comment and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Hercule, the Hercules exchange, Hercules.exchange is an exchange on Metis. Just like Uniswap is an exchange on Ethereum, for example, or QuickSwap is an exchange on, on uh, Polygon. So uh, Trader Joe is an exchange on AVAX. So that's, yeah. Herc Dex is on Metis. Yeah. Maybe. One thing too, guys, just so that you know, it can get a little bit frustrating because the swap function, sometimes the aggregator doesn't work um, or it just, it'll fail. So use the V3 swap when you yes. can. So That's, when you go that there. That is a trick. It defaults. Don't do the aggregator. Click V3 when you're swapping. 
Yeah, it, it defaults to aggregator. It might work and sometimes it goes through, but V3 always goes through, at least from what I've found. And it just it's going to be the same fee either way. So you might as well just use V3. Yeah, there you have it, baby. Baby. All right, guys. This was integrated right. Kulo swap. What do you think, guys? You think Dreamer might be talking about that? Who? Huh? Is Dreamer helping quick swap? I mean, Dreamer working with Kulo? Kulo <laughs> swap and Big Red? You think they're he's out there working these partnerships? I mean, baby. Let's yeah. Go. Yeah. Lots of Let's partnerships. Go. All these partnerships are going to be great. The Metis partnership is going to be amazing, you guys. For for PVP, I mean, those prize pools, the Metis team is committed to them. They're going to be they're going to be sweet. Of course, I know Just is going to beat my ass because he's good at it hunts, and I'm I'm pretty bad at it. But you know, still, it's going to be fun to watch. Yes, so and Bolon so did say Bolon yeah. did say in the Discord as I was stalking him that there are other protocols or projects on Metis that they're talking about with similar partnerships as this. So this might be the first of a couple. Ooh. He said it. He said it. I swear. <laughs> oh, wow. Reckless speculation. All right. I'm yeah. holding bowl on to that. Mm -hmm. I know mythic swap is still in the works. There's a lot coming guys that I, you know, I wish we could talk about. There's so much alpha coming. That's why I'm so bullish on this project. I'm so bullish on projects where I know the team. I know they're not rug pulls. They're out there working hard. They're out there grinding. Teams like also with Moon Daddy, guy, you know, Karate Combat, all these different things are being interwoven. Big Red that's tied in, you know, going to be tied in with AVAX. And they're tied in with Kulo, tied in with Dreamer with DeFi Kingdoms, tied in with Karate Combat. It's phenomenal. All the big dogs are talking about it. Look out, bullish on these things. I've been doing some videos here lately on what I'm most bullish on. There's a lot, and now's the time. We got the happening coming up. We got tons of money. We're going to have probably at least four or five X the amount of money coming into crypto, coming into the market compared to four years ago because of these ETFs. We've already got tens of billions of dollars being injected into the market. Then there's, what, what's Larry Fink with BlackRock doing? Now, next, Ethereum ETF. Does he ever fail on his ETF applications? Not very often, hardly ever, boys and girls. So much bullishness, so much big money coming, so much big institutional money coming to this ecosystem, coming to crypto. So just remember, four years ago, all the monster gains, okay? And just multiply it on this bull run because so much money, we already have Bitcoin sitting at all-time highs, even before the happening, it's never happened. That's because more and more people are falling asleep. They're in their 401ks. They're in their Roth IRAs. They're putting money away in Bitcoin every single day. I mean, every single month. And they don't even look at it. It's like a DCA strategy. It's part of their retirement portfolio. We already see it happening. And, and Bitcoin is the number one by far ETF like success from launch of all time, of all ETFs in the history of ETFs. And we're just getting started. The happening's just happening. We got the election coming. We got the Ethereum ETF coming. We've got interest rates that are going to go down. You know, it's just, it's like clockwork, easy money. It's never been this easy to make money in crypto. I've been in crypto since 2015. And these goes and goes in crazy cycles. I know the bear market gave us all mental illnesses, except the brown gent who still killed it through the bear market. But for a lot of us, we all develop mental illnesses through the bear market. It's been brutal. Hang in there, guys. This is where big money's made. And this, in my book, looks like a clear winner, just like Kulo, just like Big Red, just the tip, just like Karate Token, and a lot of these different things going. I'm excited for what's to come. It's going to be a very exciting next year and a half. Look out. Boys and girls, baby, let's go. Bruce, I love you. Crypto Baby H, love you. Beave, Christian Peter. It's just crypto freaking legends. You guys are a bunch of freaking legends. I love you. Yeah, just a tip. You got to get just a tip of that big red cock in your culo. <laughs> Boys and girls, let's go. All right. All right, guys. I love you. It's just crypto, a.k.a. Bob Nothing.
Christian Peter, Crypto Grady out. Love. Love, love you guys. Love, baby. Love. Peace.